Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to explore callbacks in uh, DeepXGE. It is a very important feature. If you have been following our uh, video tutorial so far, so we have solved several uh, ODEs, PDEs using physics informed neural networks with DeepXGE and many more tutorials on solving several uh, ODEs and PDEs are in the pipeline. But today's focus is a little different. We are not going to focus entirely on uh, solving equations. Instead, we are taking it one step further to explore how we can effectively use these callbacks in your neural network workflows with DeepXDE. So trust me, callbacks are a game-changing feature that can make your training process more efficient and flexible. This is an introductory tutorial to callbacks. We will start with the basics here and in all our upcoming tutorials you will see several different varieties of callbacks and their applications. So I encourage you to pay close attention to this tutorial because it will build the foundation for all our upcoming tutorials on several advanced topics. Before we jump into the main topic let me give you a quick overview of what exactly are we going to learn today. First we will learn how to use callbacks to save predictions at regular intervals during uh, the training process. This is super useful if you want to analyze how your model evolves over time without interrupting the training process. We will go in detail about uh, how to set up this callback and use it while training. Next, once we have saved these uh, predictions, Next, we will move on to generating animations using the saved predictions. We will create a dynamic animation that shows how the model solution improves over training epochs. This will give you a clear visual representation of the training process, making it easier to understand and showcase your results. See how the neural network prediction is converging and getting closer with respect to the exact solution. While we are discussing the process of generating animations in detail, this tutorial is not exactly about creating animations. The main objective here is to understand callbacks, how they work, how can we implement our own custom callback in our DeepXGE code. Generating animations is an intuitive and engaging process I have chosen to help you truly understand the process of implementing this callbacks. So let's get started. First, let us understand what are callbacks and why are they so powerful? Callbacks are like uh, small checkpoints in your uh, training process uh, where you can ask the computer to do some additional work for you. Generally, in a regular training process, the model trains uh, silently and you do not see what's happening inside. But with callbacks, you get full control over the training. You can automate several tasks, monitor the progress in detail, and sometimes you can use callbacks to debug your model if needed. Uh, for example, this callback saves the predictions of your model during training. Uh, at some regular intervals and uh, this callback logs important metrics like uh, loss accuracy so you can monitor the training process in real time and uh, using this callback you can stop the training automatically if you feel the model is not improving and uh, this is called early stopping it is a very useful feature to save training time so to demonstrate how callbacks works we will use uh, the euler beam problem as an example so this is a fourth order differential equation so it has four boundary conditions two boundary conditions on the right boundary and two boundary conditions on the left boundary so and this is the analytical solution for this problem i have explained in detail about uh, solving this uh, euler beam problem with custom basis in this tutorial for now i will go briefly over the key details and uh, we will focus on implementing callbacks to make the training process more effective here we are importing some libraries so the deepxd the main uh, physics informed neural networks library and uh, the numpy and matplotlib and uh, matplotlib.animation these are the three uh, libraries general purpose libraries I am importing here and uh, I am importing this uh, OS library as well for uh, creating some directories. Here I am setting uh, the plot controls so the font settings and font sizes some basic default settings I am setting here for uh, plots actually. So here I am defining the main uh, governing differential equation function. This function evaluates the derivative fourth order derivative using two Hessians and this function returns the derivative plus one. So that is this uh, the left part of this equation. And after that here I am defining two functions. This one is the boundary value L and uh, this one is the boundary L. So the boundary L 
uh, tells you whether the given point x is on the boundary or not so if so if the point is on the boundary then it will apply this boundary value on that boundary location okay and after that here i am defining some uh, custom functions to set the boundary conditions on the right boundary that is here on the right boundary we have a second order derivative and a third order derivative uh, constraints so we have to apply these things actually so i am defining this uh, custom functions here to set those boundary conditions and uh, here is the analytical solution so this function returns the value of this one so that is this after we set up this uh, main uh, analytical solution and some prerequisite functions so here onwards here onwards i am uh, setting up the main uh, physics informant neural network parameters actually first we create the geometry between 0 and 1 so that is what our boundary right and uh, after creating this geometry so here i am setting up the two boundary conditions on the left boundary they are the digital boundary condition and the neumann boundary condition and here on the right boundary i am setting up the two uh, operator boundary conditions like uh, the second derivative and third derivative here actually after that using the data class so here i am generating the data set so this data set takes geometry the main uh, governing differential equation and uh, the four boundary conditions and the number of points in the domain number of points at the boundaries and uh, the solution function so as i said many times this solution function we use it only to evaluate this relative error nothing more than that we do not use this for any of our training purposes so here i am taking 100 test points so here we have one input and one output the output is u and the input is x in between we have taken three hidden layers each with 30 neurons so we are using this tan h activation function and glurot uniform initializer to initialize our weights and bias and here i am defining the fully connected neural network with these parameters and after that i am initializing the model here and i have set up this model dot compile here with adam optimizer and a learning layout of 0.001 and matrix l2 relative error so that's it until this point we have created all the prerequisites and parameters required for the model training but we have not started the training itself that we are doing here so if you look at here this model dot train command is taking two arguments actually in all our earlier tutorials we have just used this iterations argument and we set to this some number and we have never used this uh, callbacks and uh, here in this tutorial we are introducing this uh, argument and this callbacks is a list so you can save you can use any number of uh, callback functions that you want here actually so for now i have just created one that is save predictions as i told before callbacks are tools in uh, DeepXT that allows you to perform specific actions at predefined stages during the training process they are like checkpoints where you can insert custom functionality such as uh, saving data logging matrix or uh, stopping training based on certain conditions and many more let's break down the anatomy of a callback in DeepXT. this will help you understand how callbacks are structured and how you can create your own in DeepXT, all callbacks are based on a foundational class called deepxd.callbacks.callback this is like a blueprint for creating your own custom callbacks actually when you inherit your custom class from this callback class you get access to a set of predefined methods that you can override to add your custom functionality so if you look at the callbacks class so that is uh, documented here so these are all the methods that are available in this uh, base callbacks class actually so if you look at here for example this method on train begin this method is triggered right at the start of training you can use this method to print some informative messages like uh, just uh, training started or you can use it for initializing some variables that we might track throughout the training such as a list to store loss values or matrix etc and next this uh, on train end this method is called after the training process is complete you can use this method to clean up some resources or summarize the training process for instance you could save the final predictions or print summary of the training duration and the best loss that you have achieved in this uh, training process and for example this on epoch begin so this method is triggered at the beginning of every epoch it is useful for uh, resetting some counters or logging some information at the start of 
every epoch. For example, we could print a message like uh, the current epoch is 5, something like that. And similarly, this is on epoch end. So this method is uh, triggered at the end of every epoch. Likewise, these are all the methods that uh, you can access in your custom callbacks. By combining all or uh, some of these methods, you can build your custom callback to add some uh, new functionality to the DeepXG code. So let's implement a custom callback to save the predictions during training especially at the end of every 10th epoch okay this is the class that we have written as i said this custom class inherits this dd callbacks dot callback this is a base class and this is a compulsory argument for this custom callback class and once we use this argument here so here we define this constructor and this constructor takes these arguments actually so these are all your uh, custom arguments so here i have chosen model interval and the save path as three arguments but if you want you can use more but this self the first one is a compulsory argument so after that here i am calling the init method using this super so it means we are calling the init method in the base class or the init method in the callbacks dot callback class okay from that we are uh, creating our own uh, internal data so this data we are uh, creating for this custom callback function so this self dot model saves the model and the self dot interval saves the interval and uh, self dot save path saves this path and remember this is our custom data not the one that uh, is coming from this callbacks dot callback class so this is our custom data and after that here i am creating uh, one directory uh, in this path so after that, I am creating a, a custom function. So for that, I am using this uh, on epoch end class. So that is this class. And this function is triggered at the end of every epoch. And within this epoch, what I am doing is, I am just comparing the current epoch with this interval actually. So here I have just given some default as 100 intervals, but you can change this interval number. For example, whatever the interval number that you are given. So for example, here 100. So this will compare the current epoch with this uh, interval that is 100. So if the remainder is zero, then uh, it will go into this and it will create a custom uh, data set and it will do a custom prediction for the entire model using this model.predict and uh, it will save the data into a numpy file npy file dot npy file that's it that is what it does at the end of every epoch and once we create this uh, callback class here i am instantiating that uh, callback class here actually save predictions callback class i am sending some uh, arguments so model and uh, interval i am sending it as 10 and this is 100 is the default if you do not give this variable then 100 will be taken automatically so and the save path i am giving it as predictions so here by default you have given predictions but you can choose some other name here it's up to you and this is our save predictions object of this class and this one i am sending it here callbacks is equals to save predictions as a list once you send this list this on epoch end class is triggered at the end of every epoch and if this condition criteria meets so then the following code will be triggered as well so meaning at the end of every 10th epoch the model status will be saved in a numpy file that is what it does so once we issue this model dot train and uh, the training happens so overall i have taken uh, 1400 uh, iterations so i feel uh, they are sufficient for this uh, training process to get better accurate prediction and overall uh, the train time took is uh, 23.07 seconds so see even though if it took just uh, 1400 epochs the training time is uh, very high because at the end of every epoch we are uh, calling this uh, custom callback function right so this time also counts actually so the overall training time is this much so if you use more iteration then uh, the model will be the model will take more time once the training process is complete here we are generating the animation video so this animation process consists of uh, four important functions they are mainly the generate animation function and the init function update and func animation so of this the generate animation function is the main driver function and the remaining three functions the init update and the func animation are the helper function the driver function is the one you have to call to create this animation this generate animation the driver function is the one you will call to create the animation so within this uh, generate animation function so we first load the saved uh, 
prediction files from the directory where we stored them and then here we initiate some uh, test points to evaluate the exact solution for uh, comparing our uh, neural network solution in real time so this one will not change in any epoch so this remains constant and only the pin predictions will change in every epoch and uh, here uh, we are setting some uh, plot parameters so basically uh, we are setting the formats for this legends titles and uh, labels and some colors etc we are doing some uh, plot settings here and after that we are uh, defining our helper functions this init function is used to initialize the plot before the animation starts so it clears uh, any data from the prediction line and uh, the epoch text making sure the plot starts with a clean slate so this ensures the first frame of the animation is properly set up next is the update function and uh, this is where most of the action happens actually it is called for uh, every frame in the animation first it figures out at which epoch we are uh, currently in and uh, this can be achieved from the file name because our prediction files are stored in this uh, prediction directory so if you look at here we have saved each file like this actually so with the epoch number so pred epoch and here the 10 represents the epoch number at which these predictions are saved so the first objective of this update function is to extract this number from the file name the epoch number and uh, once we do that it loads the data from the file and uh, it updates the prediction line with the new data and uh, change the epoch text to show the current epoch number finally we have uh, this func animation function so this is a glue function that holds everything together so it uses the init function to set up the initial state of the plot and then for each frame it calls the update function to update the plot with new data it also controls the speed of animation using the interval argument and uh, finally it saves the animation as a video file here i have defined the parameters specific to the video and uh, here we are calling this uh, generate animation function okay so this is the video file name that we are using so once we run this uh, entire code so we get to see a video file like this so if you open it it will pop up like this so let's stop this it a little bigger let's go to the beginning let's play and uh, this is the final animation that you have got actually so the red one is the exact solution which doesn't change in any epoch and the blue line is your main uh, prediction from the neural network see at the start your solution is a uh, very uh, inaccurate and uh, very far away from your uh, exact solution but uh, as you are moving through higher epochs your uh, pin prediction slowly converges to the exact solution and uh, the convergence is also fairly decent so overall at uh, the thousandth epoch so you have got some good convergence next here uh, i have created some callback functions for your reference i have not used these callbacks in this tutorial but they are great examples to help you understand uh, how you can create your own custom callbacks if you want to fine tune your uh, training process or automate specific tasks these examples will be very helpful this callback function logs the training and the testing loss at uh, regular intervals and this is particularly useful if you want to monitor how the loss evolves during training without manually printing it in every epoch and here this callback function implements an early stopping strategy it stops the training process if there is no improvement in the test loss for a certain number of epochs so this is extremely useful when you want to avoid wasting time and resources on a model that has stopped uh, learning and uh, at last if you want you can combine uh, any number of uh, callback functions so here you can combine all the three callback functions in the model that we have created so like this actually this is a callbacks argument in this model dot train so here you can combine all the save predictions log loss and the early stopping all three in the form of a list so you can combine all these functions in this list and control your model training they all will work together seamlessly that's all for this tutorial so if you have any questions or doubts please feel free to ask them in the comment section below if you have found this uh, tutorial helpful please hit the like button and do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more uh, tutorials like this thank you for watching happy learning